media in the workroom. Uh, Loyola has left the locker room and is heading this way to the interview room and should be here in just a minute or so. Um, have some announcements to make as we wait for the uh, student athletes and coach to arrive. Uh, those of you working at courtside, please be advised that two hours after the conclusion of the second game, um, the arena crews will begin tearing down the basketball court and press row. So please complete your work here in the media workroom, okay? Um, transcripts obviously will be distributed here in the arena, but you can find them on this um, website online, ncaa.com at slash transcripts. Again, that's ncaa.com slash transcripts. Here in the interview room, please silence the cell phones. Uh, no flash photography and no video of any kind can take place in this room. Um, satellite coordinates, Galaxy 17, KU Band, Transponder 17C, 12044.5 is the horizontal, symbol rate 7.2 and the FEC 5 over 6, okay? And when you ask your question, please wait for the microphone. And when it does come your way, please state name and affiliation. Thank you. Okay, we are ready to begin with the Ramblers of uh, Loyola University Chicago, uh, Coach Porter Mosier, and we have three student athletes, Clayton Custer, Ben Richardson, and Andre Jackson. Coach, we'll call on you first for uh, your thoughts on tonight's victory. I, I first want to say uh, all glory and thankfulness goes to God. He's been so good to this group, me, this university, and the glory goes to him, first and foremost. Second, um, just, it's amazing when you have a group of people who believe. I mean, I just, this, this group is resilient. Um, they believe. We've come back from deficits. We've lost leads and found ways to win games. And, uh, you know, they just kept believing. And then, uh, you know, we, we, it, this group is, uh, has been ultra resilient. And I'm blessed to coach them. And, uh, and I, I just, I think, Clay, um, thank you. <laughs> it was a great shot. Um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, Coach, thank you. Let's go to questions for our student athletes first. Guys, on your left will be the first one in the middle. Uh, Shannon Ryan, Chicago Tribune. Clayton, can you just describe what you saw in that shot and what you were thinking as the ball bounces up off the rim? It probably seemed like it took a while to get back through the rim. Um, I mean, Coach put me in a position to, to make a play at the end, and I'm uh, very appreciative of that. Um, I mean, the only thing I can say is um, uh, glory to God for that one. I mean, the ball bounced up on the on the rim, and, and, and I got a good bounce like that. But uh, the only thing I could think about after the game was, is that that's all the hard work that I put, like that you put in to to get in a situation like this, and all those hard, like those hours. I was waking up early in the morning and working out, and to for all that hard work to come up to that lucky bounce is worth it. And I think all the hard work, um, the basketball gods. Um, help that one go in and uh, I'm just I'm just super uh, blessed to be in this in this situation right now we'll stay on the left Ryan Willett ESPN San Antonio Andre and Ben what does this win mean for your team advancing to the sweet 16 both for your team and your school as a whole uh, it just means 
But it just means our season's not over. Like, we preached no finish line. We just took another step in getting where we want to get. So we're going to go back and get ready for the next game. Yeah, and, um, I would say the same thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to, you know, get some exposure for our school and our fans. And, um, you know, on the national stage, you know, we know there's so many loyal fans that have come up to us, you know, that have been fans, you know, since 63, the national championship team. And, and they're so proud of us. And it just means the world to us to, to you know, bring that pride back to this program. And, uh, you know, it's just a tribute to all these guys, all the guys in the locker room, coach, and um, all the administrators that, you know, have supported us. Uh, and like Dre said, uh, this, is, this is just another step. And, uh, you know, we're, we're planning to, to advance, and, and, and we want to win every game we're in. Again on the left. David Hodge, Chicago Tribune. Clayton, so what was discussed during the timeout with 10 seconds left? What was the plan uh, or the play? Um, I mean, it was just uh, we ran like a safety to get it into me. Um, and then Crutwig was – I was going to kind of dribble over to the left kind of, and then Crutwig was going to come up and kind of act like he was going to set a screen and then drop it and then kind of just let me go towards my – like with my right hand, um, went towards my right, kind of felt that he was uh, – kind of got him going, kind of got him going fast so that he wasn't going to be able to contest my shot when I shot it and uh, just elevated and, and shot it and got a, got a good bounce. We still got another game. You can go left. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Kay. Let's move on the right. Henry Redmond, Loyola Phoenix. Ben, what's it like watching your best friend since the third grade hit that shot to go to the Sweet 16? Um, you know, I like he was talking about earlier, um, I've seen him make – a uh, one, two dribble, one, two pull up, probably a million times. <laughs> and I have so much faith in that shot, you know, just because I've seen him make it, like, like when we're just working out and stuff, he makes it like a 98% clip. <laughs> so, like, it, before games, I'm always just like, like, get to that one, two pull up, get to that one, two pull up. Like, <laughs> like he can tell you that. Like, I always try to, try to tell him because it's, it's such a high percentage shot for him. He knocks it down so much, and it's just, it's fitting that, you know, he hits a big shot. Um, you know, going going one two pull up like like we've been doing in the gym for our whole lives, working on that working on that shot, and, and I'm so happy for him. And and this moment is, is something I'll never forget. Let's move back to the left here, here in the middle. Me, right? Okay. You guys have talked about the idea of um, you know every game could be a different guy, and it seems like it's coming true. Like where every every these last two games has been somebody, a different hero at the end. Um, what, what does that say about your team, just that, you know, the other night it's Dante hitting the big shot, and tonight it's you? Um, I mean, I, I think that that just speaks to the culture at our, at our, in our program. I mean, we, we don't care about some, – some nights, some people get a, more shots than other nights. Like, there's some nights where Dre might only shoot four or five shots, and I might shoot 12. And then there's, an, there's some nights where – Dre will ha find himself open more than I find myself open. So he shoots the ball 12 times, and I shoot the ball five times. And we don't care how many shots that we're going to get um, on any given night. It's just wh whoever – the ball is going to find you if you're open. And, and we trust – we have so many weapons that, that we trust that people are going to make plays. Um, and, I mean, yesterday Dante – or a couple days ago, Dante hit the shot. And um, today I hit the shot. But, I mean, anybody on our team could – could make shot, a big shot down the stretch. So uh, I think it just speaks to the culture that we have um, in our program. Closing questions now for our student athletes here on the right, up front. Adam Grosspart, Dallas Morning News. Andre, what does it mean to you to have this moment back here in DFW with friends and family, get to share it with them? Uh, it's, <clears throat> uh, it's just an amazing feeling. Uh, I spotted out all my friends and family out in the crowd. And then once I had a good game, and then once we won the game, I went up to them. And then, it was just crazy. It was just an unbelievable feeling. Okay, last question here on the right. For you. Josh, Josh Peter, USA Today. No offense, but when you guys take the court, you're not the most imposing looking team. Does that sort of play to your advantage in some ways? What? Sorry, what did you say? Can you guys, uh, do you exploit that in some ways? That kind of work, in, it work, to, you, it work to, to your advantage in some ways? You mean we're not, we're not scary looking? <laughs> We don't scare you. <laughs> go, I think we're pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want to take? I'll take it. I mean, you know, we, we, it's no secret. You know, we're not the biggest team. You know, uh, but, you know, what coach teaches, and he's been preaching since I got here. You know, just principles and culture, and and things 
things that you, you can reference on a, a, every little part of possession. And, you know, I mean, before the game, you know, Coach was always saying, like, he was preaching before the game, you know, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. And I know that's cliche, but that's something that we've really embraced. Um, and we've embraced every part of our culture well this year, and that's why we've gotten to, to where we are because, you know, you don't need to be the biggest guy when you're guarding, you know, the SEC player of the year down there. You just have to fight harder, and you you got to have help from the rest of your team. You know, it takes five guys out there. Um, and and we've been connected very well this year, and I think that's why we've been able to compete and rebound and get stops because, you know, it's it's been five guys, you know, connected and linked together. Um, and then we just executed and, and, and kind of bought into the culture that Coach has been preaching uh, all, all year, our wall of culture. You know, we, we bought into all that stuff. Okay. Clayton, Ben, and Andre will let you uh, return to your locker room where you'll have more one-on-one -on -one interviews with media. Congratulations on your victory tonight. <clears throat> Thank you for coming, and good luck next week. Questions now for Coach Moser. Uh, we'll go in the back on the right side, Coach, first. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Coach, are you worried you're going to shed this image of the underdog and Vegas is going to make you the favorite the next four games? You know, I can't talk about Vegas up here. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I, it, like, like I say at every press conference, listen to these guys. I mean, how unbelievable. I mean, you heard Dante the other day say anybody can make it, and they mean it. I mean, you saw how genuinely happy Ben was for Clay is making that shot. I mean, you, it's it's – it's amazing what you can do when you get a group of people believing and that are really tight. I've said that since day one, and I've said it for years now. The, the guys, we, we, are, we have a close-knit culture, and the guys in the, in the locker room pull for each other. They share the ball, and uh, it's just amazing. They really, we all, we really believe. We'll go on coaches left. Ryan Willett, ESPN San Antonio. Coach, a lot of times after a big win like you had on Thursday, Teams have a letdown, and they come out flat the next game. What did you do to keep that from happening today? Well, we came out struggling uh, on defense. I think they had 15 points in the first five minutes. Um, and we called a timeout, and then they had 10 points the last 15 minutes of the half. Um, I think one of the things we talk about, we've been doing it now for about a month or two, is that we knew we, you know, we were – having to win and win the conference and then get to the conference tournament. And it's been this mentality of you win, enjoy the moment. I've said that, I've been asked a million times, are you, are you letting the guys enjoy it? I'm like, heck yeah, I'm letting them enjoy it. I mean, because it's a mature, close group. And I want them to enjoy it. And then the next day, they all, we all say, put it in the bank, next one up. And you kind of heard one of them reference it right there. And uh, these guys, uh, after uh, we beat Miami, um, it was great. We had a great meal, just our team at the hotel. It was just it was just really special team meal, and then they had some rest, and the coaches went to work, and we talked a little bit before they went to bed, and the next day, it was completely locked in. The film sessions, the walkthrough in the ballrooms, we came here and shot, um, they had put it behind you, and that's a, it's a credit to everyone in the locker room. I mean, they, they enjoyed it, and, and then they moved on, and we're going to enjoy this. I guarantee you we're enjoying this. I hope the people in Chicago, I can't imagine St. Patty's Day in Chicago because this Chicago, <laughs> Chicago's in, embraced this team so much. And uh, to embrace this in Chicago and St. Patty's Day, wow. My younger self would have loved to have been there. <laughs> Coach, we'll move to your right on the Henry inside Redman. aisle. Henry Redmond, Loyola Phoenix. Coach, Admiral Schofield scored 11 points in the first five minutes and then three the rest of the game. What was the plan to slow him down? Well, I think he said, um, I'm an Illinois guy, and I'm going to give it to him right out of the gate. Wow, he was hot. Um, and uh, we, we just had to regroup. I called the timeout, and uh, it just shows the culture of these guys that we, you know, trust is a big thing. And I always say that, you know. I, I remember working for Coach Majerus, Coach Baroni. You can get on kids if they know they love you. That's a big thing in today's society. If they know you care and they know you love you, that, that you love them, you can get on them. I got on them as hard as I've gotten on them in a month. At, the media, at that first time out when they, got, they scored 15 points. And they, they just, I got it. They, they, they knew. I mean, they knew. And, and we turned it. And the way they responded in, in um, you know, the next 15 minutes. Um, but Schofield is, uh, he is a terrific player. He's a terrific competitor. He is a terrific competitor. Um, he's hard to guard because he can shoot the three, he can rise above you, and he can get you on the block. He is a very hard matchup. 
Again on the left. David Hosh, Chicago Tribune. Porter, offensively, it seemed as if the, the ball movement was working, the ball fakes were effective. W was that an extra point of emphasis tonight against a more athletic team, or is that just the way things always go when things are clicking? Well, we, they're so athletic, and I know they, they run people off the line. They're trying to get you to make the extra pass, extra pass, and they're just, they cover so much ground. And we kind of talked about it. That's, that's what we've been doing all year is making the extra pass and, and not just settling when they – because they, they really cover some ground with their length and athleticism, and they run you off the line. They run you off that line, and we talked about not settling. Uh, you know, shot faking, going downhill, change it, change it. And that's – we were talking that, – that fits into what we, we've been doing all year. And I thought we really were moving the ball once we got settled in after that first five minutes. Closing questions now for Coach Moser here on the right. Adam Grossbart, Dallas Morning News. You've mentioned that timeout a couple of times. Right after that, you insert Andre into the lineup, and he gets two quick baskets and an assist, feeling a 6-0 run himself. What does it mean to the team to have a senior like that who can come off the bench and impact the game? Andre is one of the most selfless young men you know, here he is. He was sixth man of the year. Last year he was averaging over 30-some minutes a game. Um, and we have a different look. we got a freshman who's terrific, Cam Crutwig. And they've been back and forth, different games, different nights. But he, it gives us a different look. You come in with Crutwig, who is his true big center. And then you come in and we're small, but Dre's a mismatch guy. He's quick. He's, at, he's, just, he's a different look. And they, that's been something. He's really efficient, again, tonight. He had, you know, 16 points on seven shots. I said it up here the other night, or in one of the press conferences, people asked me about Andre, and I'm like, I love, under, I love guys that are efficient. You know, he, that, that translates in junior college to here. 16 points on seven shots. I'm, I, I hugged him so hard on the floor. I said, man, hometown, going to the Sweet 16, family and friends here, I, God is good. And he, said, he just he said, absolutely, he just hugged me. And it was uh, really happy for him because we've been trying to get him back in Texas scheduling games and for him to get a game back in Texas uh, like two like this and to do this special for him final qu uh, question for coach here on your right what kind of shape was the program in when you took over and how did you manage to get it here it was tough it was tough I mean it, you know it was been a grassroots rebuild everything from you know a couple hundred people at games to during games you could walk through. I remember my family member said they'd walk through the student union and more people in the student union than in the arena. Um, you know, uh, and it was, um, it was uh, at the bottom of the Horizon League, and, and, uh, which is a good league. And, uh, and then we moved to the Missouri Valley. Um, and uh, it just, it's just, it's been a grassroots rebuild. And I'm blessed, so blessed, that Loyola University, the administrators, the fan bases, they were steadfast on how, we were, how I was saying I was going to do it. With good kids, good people, we weren't going to bend on the academic reputation. Um, all our kids graduate. We got high character kids. And it was, it was a credit to them, and in this day and age, because I know fan bases all over want it so fast. They want it so fast. And it's hard. It's hard to have a rebuild, because you've got to get your kids in there to recruit. Um, you've got, you know, and you're not going to hit on the first recruiting class, everyone's like, well, the second year they better win. Well, your first recruiting class is a freshman, you know? So it takes time to get those kids to where your recruiting class comes in and your older kids are like, this is how our culture is. And I'm blessed that, that the university was, had the same vision. And this is the vision. I said it so many different places I spoke. I go, can you imagine, you know, getting into the NSA tournament, advancing? Can you imagine our university or Chicago? And uh, I'm from the Chicago area, and I just, I just kept on pounding that vision. And uh, I've had a great coaching staff. My coaching staff is, is an extension of, of everything we're doing. Um, and it isn't just one person. It isn't just me. It is an absolute wide stretch of people at Loyola that has had this vision to do it the right way with a good foundation of great kids, great student athletes. All right, Coach. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, congratulations. Good luck thank next you. week. And uh, the SID from uh, Loyola, Bill Behrens, is over here. If you need anything else from uh, the Ramblers uh, tonight or heading into next week, just call Bill.
sale. Um, hey, uh, hey, who's over here? That is Loyola, I just gave you, right? Uh, Bill, Bill Barron. Okay, we are joined now by the uh, volunteers of the University of Tennessee, uh, Coach Rick Barnes. Uh, student athletes with us are Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams. Coach, we'll call on you first for your thoughts on tonight's game. You know, it's always a tough way to lose a basketball game, the buzzer beaters, and uh, but you know, we had a had the ball with a chance to tie it or go up, we did. They had a, the ball with a chance to win it, and uh, they did it. And, um, but uh, I can, again, congratulations to Loyola. Got a really nice basketball team. And, but I am proud of our guys. I, you know, they kept fighting today, found a way to stay in it, and uh, put themselves in a position to uh, have a chance to win it. And um, obviously a tough way to lose it. But uh, again, congratulations to Loyola. And we've got a lot to, to build on going forward. Thank you, Coach. Questions for uh, Grant or Admiral? And we'll come back for Coach in just a bit. Okay, Coach here. I mean, the guys here on the right toward the front. Uh, Joe Rexer with the Tennessee and for both of you guys. Obviously, a 15-6 start. They called the timeout, and the game really seemed to flip them from there. What did they do to adjust and change things at that point? Admiral, you want to go first on that? Uh, they started making shots. You got it. Um, they, we just didn't continue to play on a defensive end. Um, we, were, we were playing hard, but we weren't really playing smart. So um, uh, that's basically it. OK, get on the right. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Admiral, for you, after you picked up the second foul and went to the bench, I mean, how hard was it to get back in the groove? You had 11 points in the first four minutes. Did you feel like you, you kind of cooled off? No, I, I wouldn't say I cooled off. It was just it's just hard to play physical like I do uh, out on the floor. And, um, you know, that's just sometimes that's how the game goes. You know, the refs got to control the game in a certain way, but credit to them. They got in position, and the refs called what they saw. Other questions for Grant or Admiral? Okay, again here on the right. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Uh, Grant. What did you notice about not having Kyle out there? How was the game different? And was it mostly on defense where, where you feel like that showed up? Yeah, he's a talented defender. He's our rim protector. Um, we missed him, but we had a lot of guys that could step up and fill that role. And um, But it's hard to beat it, win a game when you allow a team to shoot 50% from the field. Um, it's, it's hard. Um, it's hard to win. Other questions? Okay, again here on this outside right. You know, it's tough right now, guys, but can you look at this season and, and still put in perspective what you guys have done for this program? Um, well, we, we've worked really hard. And the biggest thing is we've we brought some excitement around the basketball program again. Um, tough loss, big shot, and for us, you know, it, it doesn't define who we are. It doesn't define our season. You know, we did a lot of great things this year, but you know, it's motivation. You know, it's something that you know we needed to 
needed to happen, especially for our group. You know, we still got guys that are going to be returning. And for us, you know, all we can do is build on it. You know, we got here. We got a taste, a little bit of taste of what it's like to be here. And, you know, if we want to go further, we got to work a little harder. So, and not, not to say that we didn't work hard, but we worked very hard and, you know, just the little things, you know, what goes in the wind and we got to correct and we got to be more consistent in that. And I think that, you know, with this experience, it'll really help. And Grant? Yeah, um, what Admiral said, um, we did a good job this year when it comes to putting Tennessee kind of back on the map. But um, it's really about just coming back next year and being stronger because um, this team, we have all, almost everyone returning. And um, so. Hey, any other questions for the two guys? No? Okay. Um, we'll let you go back to the locker room with your SID, Tom uh, Sakoviak. Uh, thank you for coming. Great season. And um, we will see you down the road. Questions now for Coach Barnes. Coach, here on your right. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Coach, when did you know Kyle wouldn't be able to go? And, and I, I know it's impossible to say exactly how it impacted the game, but what, you know, how much did you miss him? Well, uh, we weren't sure we were going to wait right before the game to see if he could do anything. And, and uh, he didn't do anything with our – it's not that we did a lot, you know, to get ready. I mean, we did our walkthroughs and, and our, what we normally do, just a shorter version of everything. Uh, and he couldn't do any of that, but he still tried to stretch. And, uh, but he warmed up, but he couldn't do it. And um, is there is yeah I mean he's a difference maker I mean we don't have a guy that uh, we can't replace he, him what he does at the rim for us we can't but uh, and I'm not again I'm not taking anything away from Loyola Chicago because they won the game and but you know you've watched us play all year he's been a big part of what we've done and we had these clips before the game showing the guys our defense and to be honest with you I, when we walked out of the room I said uh, maybe we shouldn't have shown that because Kyle was involved in all of them. You know, and uh, and he does, but uh, and he's crushed because you know he wanted to be able to go, and he but he but he just couldn't do it. Okay, here on the left, Ryan Willett, ESPN San Antonio, Coach. How tough was it down the stretch without any timeouts? How did that affect your strategy? It it was, but uh, it was tough. But you know, we had to use some a couple times to try to. Again, Grant had to play a lot of minutes today, and Admiral getting in foul trouble early and. And, you know, the start of the game, we came out emotional, playing hard. But our offense, uh, the question I was asked earlier about what did they do different, we took bad shots. I mean, we were making them play long possessions on defense, and we'd go down and jack up a quick three after three or four seconds, and we had to come back and play defense again. So we didn't really give ourselves a chance. I, again, we were too emotionally charged up there. And But, um, you know, uh, I like saving timeouts, especially with, with teams. I do. I like to do that. Like. Um, but I did tell them if they score what we what I like to see us doing. To be quite frank, we didn't do it, and uh, I wanted to let the ball roll and set up a play that we have. But again, they're young and and uh, emotional, and and those things happen. And as much as you talk about it and and hope that you prep for it, uh, but because uh, Bone can get the ball, he can cover some distance pretty quickly. But we didn't get, really get get a chance to, to do it the way we'd like to have done it. But he still got it down there. But I, I think we. Again, again, it's the emotional part of it because we guarded it and, and they made a tough shot, but uh, that, that's part of the game. Guys, there's players capable of making those kind of shots. Okay, here on the right. In the second half, it seemed like they were really emphasizing not letting Grant get the ball. I assume you wanted him to have it more than he got it in the second half? Well, again, but we felt, I mean, at some time or other, player, we can't, we didn't want to just stand around and force feed it to him. I mean, they, they, I mean, he gets a lot of attention, but we needed some other guys to step up and make some plays too. I mean, he played a lot of minutes, and uh, and we want to get it to him. But there, when he, he Grant did a great job passing the ball. We knew they were going to double team him. A couple of times they didn't, and then uh, made a terrific play there to put us up there at the end. But um, he, you know, he was working to get it because and they weren't making it easy for him but I, I just felt like our guards early in the game were not they were holding the ball too long they weren't moving the ball they weren't moving themselves we wanted to drive more you look at it we kept talking about drive the ball drive the ball drive the ball and, and we didn't get enough of that out of our guards and like I said early I mean we took six or seven straight threes where uh, that's just not what we do and uh, 
And it's, it's emotion. I think it's emotion more than anything and being, like I said, too, a little bit too charged up. We'll stay on coaches, right? Rob Lewis again. Um, Coach, just what was your message to the team after the game? You know, they're, they're crushed. I mean, uh, we all are. I mean, uh, but – and I told them, I said, hey, uh, it, it, one, I'm glad it hurts a little bit because I've had some teams, sometimes you wonder if it hurt deep enough. But uh, I told them once we step back and decompress from all of it, uh, we've done a lot, uh, a lot more than certainly what other people thought. But uh, as a group, these guys felt they, they could win, and they're going to look back on it in a couple of weeks and realize that uh, it, it was a special year. But it also puts us in a different position. We, we won't pick, be picked to finish 13th next year in the league or 14th. I think we've been picked there three years in a row, either 13th or 14th. So now that presents another challenge that we'll get into later on. But right now, uh, and I told them, uh, they've got to be proud for, and you know as much as anybody, Rob, that the University of Tennessee and needed something good to happen to it, especially in the athletic department. I think those guys have created that. and. Uh, going forward and we've got some wonderful student athletes at Tennessee and some great uh, uh, programs not, you know going on and uh, but I think it was a great year for the university with, with his basketball team because we, uh, it was good and, and I told those guys that and uh, the way our fans got behind us was special and the fact that they shared a SEC title and uh, came within a couple seconds of getting to the sweet 16 and uh, but uh, like I told them, they've got to want more. I told them they, uh, we talked about what, and they know what our goals are. Uh, and one of them will be to try to be in this tournament every year, something you don't take for granted. And uh, I told them coming in here, uh, trying to explain to them, because they had never been part of the NCAA tournament, that none of them had, had ever participated. And I said to them, when uh, pairings come out, you know, we didn't put up the board or any of that stuff. You know, we just talked about who was right in front of us. And I said, you know, I've seen, an, I think, everything you can see in terms of this tournament except one thing, and that's a one and a 16 beating a one. And I said, I don't know if it will happen in my lifetime, but it's going to happen in yours. And uh, the first thing they said to me this morning, they said, well, Coach, I guess you've seen it all, and uh, which I don't think I have. But I've seen a lot of these kind of games where buzzer beaters and and you know teams, uh, and it hurts. I, I, it's just, but it's a one team hurts. The other team feels good and gets to go on. But uh, I hope this team, like Admiral said, uh, we've got a lot of guys coming back, all but one. And uh, if they can use it as a catalyst uh, to want to get back here and try to go deeper and further, it, uh, it can be a good thing. Anything else for Coach? Okay. Rob Lewis again, Coach, just the free throws. You mentioned the guards weren't driving the basketball like you wanted, it, wanted them to. Is that the main problem? I guess did you guys end up shooting seven, perhaps? On the well, way? again, we wanted, you know, going inside is not just throwing the ball to Grant Williams. And um, I, felt, I felt like the only time we really drove it hard was the last play of the first half. But, but I thought, of, again, I told the guys uh, when we were up, uh, not telling the coaches, hey, I mean, everybody going in the game, like they had to get a shot off. And, uh, and so we uh, – and we wanted to drive the ball. We, we, wanted, we knew they were going to switch. They, they didn't really do anything that we didn't expect them to do. And, uh, but we just didn't uh, – we settled. And they would have let us do that all night long if we'd have wanted to do that. But uh, uh, at, at the end – but they, we, but our guys, I'm proud of them. They hung in there. You know, they had, we had to fight through it. We had to fight through Admiral not playing a while, Kyle obviously not being in it. But, uh, uh, they, again, we came back and – and we and that's what we told them. We, we can just get get the ball back and make some plays on the other end, get the lead, put, put a little pressure back on them. And Grant made a terrific move there. It almost came up with a great turnover. It would have been a great turnover. Uh, but then you got to give them. They they made a, a, a pretty tough shot. They really did. And the ball hit and bounced and goes in. But that's basketball. Any other questions for Coach Barnes? Okay, Coach, we'll let you go. Thank you, and again, congratulations Thank on a fantastic you year. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless you. Okay. Same to you. Okay. See you.